begin to do the head hog, I want to show you some feature of the chuck. The mechanism of the one wheel is operated by two stick. Talon and stronghold are operated by bevel gears. The truck come, the trucks come with an adapter that you have to specify according to the dimension of your late spindle. For example, my first late had a spindle one inch diameter and eight threads per inch. When I changed my late, I had only to buy a new adapter and replace the first one. So I didn't have to buy another chuck. There is uh, some security feature on the adapter. There is two, two screws <coughs> on the side of the adapter to lock the truck in place and prevent to unscrew the truck when you put the lace in reverse. So <coughs> when you mount the truck on the lathe, it's a good practice to fix the truck with those screws. Also, <coughs> when you fix the truck, screw it all the way and give a little twist at the end to snap the truck. So <coughs> the, the, the truck will jam in place. The other thing, I remove uh, one jaw on my tunnel chuck <coughs> and to show you a small groove in the body of the truck, right here you can see, and there is one of the jaws that has a little pin, so this jaw, this chuck, uh, jaw will go only there, and the pin will slide in the groove. So <clears throat> when you open the when you open the truck, uh, the the pin in the groove will go to the end of the groove and will prevent the um, uh, carrier to get out. So that's a security feature. There is another groove smaller and this one uh, prevent the jaws to go outside the body of the truck okay that's what i want to tell you about the truck now let's do the a job i will use a step center to do that okay. so my block of wood is five inches and a half long and about two and a half inches square. So I found the center. What kind of wood is that? Maple. <laughs> On each side. On each end, I would say. And this side will be the bottom, so I will make a center line right here, and also on this side. Okay. Now, <coughs> we want to turn that offset to have a flat spot under the edge hog. You can do it by sanding it after if you want, but uh, it's more fun to, make, uh, to turn it offset. So that will be the position of the offset. Okay. 
So you can see that if I use the true center, I can have a circle here, and when you turn it, you remove wood equal each side. But if you put it offset, like this mark here, you will get a circle like this one. It will finish here, and you will have the flat spot. Uh, what else? Even if it's offset, you can also make it round, show by this circle here. So that's the uh, three position that we can have here, but we will use the two position offset, and also I will make um, a tenon at uh, one side to uh, hold it at the, at, the, at the end to cut the edge out from the, the block. And for the nose, you, I, you do it as you like, I would say, here. So this side will be the, uh, the, the, the end of the nose of the edge jug. That's why I put the second mark here. I will begin by turning offset first, and after that eccentric. You can see here the offset. Okay, here it's almost near the wood, and here you have almost uh, maybe a three quarter of an inch. So it will turn like that. It's a little less violent when you get get around. So okay, we we'll still have yeah. some uh, wood to. trick of running the back of the tool on it to see if it's round doesn't work because you don't want it a hundred percent round. You want it about eighty percent round. Still a flat stop here. Still got two flat spots. Yeah, we don't need that. 
So you've got your almost round there. You got your, everything is close around, so one tiny tiny. But that a skew wouldn't work there because of the air gap. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. That's good. So now we we change. We gotta. We now have to dimension it. Do we not? Jack found this and would turn his magazine. Fred lent me the same copy, so I've, I've seen the article. Um, uh, I measure one inch and three eighths from the bottom. Okay, one and three eighths in from one end. And this all depends on. Um, the body would be. Two inches and three eighths. Two and three eighths, did you? Yeah. Say? Yeah. Okay. So the body's two and three eighths. So. My goodness, that's a big job. It's a baby one. So, what you need in stuff like this is something at each end, full width. So you never cut the ends. Don't touch the ends from now on. Because when you move the eccentric centre at the other end, <laughs> you're going to need it there, aren't you? Okay, we made a uh, tenon here. Yeah. Must be got or tenon of the cover. Okay, you, are you going to put tenon on that? Okay. More okay. well, than one between centre and one. There's more than one way of skinning it and wrap it there. See my uh, parting tool? Yeah, the parting tool's got a lovely little groove in it. There's a, a curve inside yeah. here. So it, it, cut, it cuts the, the wood very sharp. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's a nice tool. Because, yeah, because it's undercutting mm -hmm. on the lower edge, it really bites through there very, very, very well. With the, the hollow base, you have a little spike on each side of the cutting edge. So I will make, uh, uh, the, uh, we give the shape here, yeah. and after that I will turn eccentric. Okay. Did you guys catch that? Between the two center marks that you put on with the parting tool, that's going to be the hedgehog body. And this is a spindle gouge. Mm -hmm. 
Mr. Hedgehog, buddy. Sound a little bit. Yeah. Let me show you this. Yeah. 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 We won't, we won't suffer, but you will. I notice that I have more problems when I make the groove first, because here it is eccentric. Yeah. So when I make the grooves at the beginning, right. it was too hard for me to make the curves here. Okay, so I'll, follow, I'll make, follow what he's saying. At the end. According to the magazine article, you make the grooves in the body first, then you go eccentric and make the knolls. But you keep on running into the, the grooves that you've made. So this way, he's going to put the nose on next, put the face profile, and then come back and groove the body. Now the Green? front come out. Big in. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I've got a loose connection. Well, no, I've got a loose uh, connection. <laughs> now you can put the, the screen if you want. It, I'm going to get one of those steps. Okay, so I need the, <coughs> the step center at this place, on yeah. this side, but on this side here, Basically, what Jacques has done now is move the center of the tailstock in a further quarter of an inch. Yeah, I know the microphone's coming. This way, he can cut the little nose that he needs. The hedgehog's face. Now. Okay, so, what do you... See, I read the same mag magazine article and I interpreted it differently. <laughs> it's, it's a little more of one way of doing things. the speed because there will be less bumping yeah yeah so you increase the increase the, the, the speed so you can get less vibrations through the gout Centric. Here the, the gauge is bumping against yeah. that, so yeah. it's very difficult over there. Well, 
sneaking feeling Jack Charlton being this woman came here this evening. I've never been faced with that problem. In fact, I lifted my leg up in the air. And one thing I should point out to any of you beginners out there, when you're in centric turning, your, the center of the nose that you're just cutting is now off axis to put the piece. He is now going to put it back to do the, the lines on it and to part it. Okay. Do not put too much pressure on the tail stop when you move it back down to center line. Because the piece of wood so, is eccentric. No, that's not good. <clears throat> I was supposed to make the tenon before. Because now the center is here. Right, if you're very, very gentle. So it will be difficult to make the tenon. Wait, wait a minute. If you're very gentle, can we back this out very gently? Don't put a lot of pressure on it. Oh, I'm going there. Can you turn the tenon gently now? No, but it won't be wrong. <laughs> no, it should be straight now. It should be straight. We're back in the original center. No, it's not. I think it's, it's not the original center. Well, sorry. Yeah, we're going back to the wrong. We're going back to the off center. That's the center we want. Very gently, John. Thank you. Rescue. Never give up.
So now that the tenon here is in the same axis of the offset I made at the beginning. Yes. We're so back on, on the center line of the piece. This is why I like key chucks. I've only got two hands. When you need to hold the piece and two bars, you need three hands. Or get clever like Jacques. He is now going to put in the decorative grooves. Now what are we using? Ah, we're using the, a, a little detailed gouge here. It's, oh, this is a tripod. If you're brave, you can do it from skewing the, the, the toe down and just cut, cut, if you're brave. <laughs> the, the annoying thing about those details is they do rip, whereas a skew will cut. A skew will give you a cleaner B groove. It's not, it's not very good. You were a little bit harsh on it, I think, Joel. Oh, okay. A little bit too fast, but I mean, you're going to clean it with the. Okay, be a brave now. Ooh. Here, hang on a minute, he's got us tall, I don't know. We are now doing a nose job on a hedgehog. There we go, and that lovely nose job. <laughs> Thank you very much, Joe.